Hello and welcome one and all. My name is Zoe Schwind and I have the utmost pleasure of hosting this Overwatch 2 developer live stream where we want to talk about the upcoming Overwatch 2 beta, the alpha and the general approach to content as well as communication. And joining me to answer some of the many questions I know that we all have after the most recent developer update are no other than Aaron Keller, our game director, Jeff Goodman, lead hero designer, and John Spector, commercial leader. Thank you guys so much for you know taking the time to chat with me today. I am just so excited to have you all on for this show. Now, uh, last week, or the last weeks even, must have been pretty emotional for you guys and your teams as well. How are we feeling today? Um, well, first, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today and for everyone that's watching for taking the time to to watch we're like we're so excited to to talk to everyone and to to continue with our communication and the team is really excited right now it's been a long time since we've um, been able to talk about this and it's been even longer since we've been in this position where we have people playing um, a development build of Overwatch, like people in the public are doing that right now. And it's so fun to watch. It's so great to interact with those people and hear all of the feedback that they have. And then all of the amazing conversations that it spurs on the team. Um, it's, it's just an exciting place to be in. Yeah, I think exciting is putting it almost mildly. It's also, I always say like when we, the first time you're the public of any kind gets to see your game, it's like, it's almost more exciting when you actually ship it. Cause it's like the first, uh, you know, interaction you get and the kind of feedback you're getting. And man, it's been a flurry of feedback. It's been great. We've been <laughs> reacting pretty aggressively. Yeah, I'm, I'm the new guy on this team now, having just moved over from Overwatch League a couple months ago. But I think just seeing what it's meant to a lot of the people on the team who have been working on this for years to now be able to show that to players and, and we're, you know, a month, a month and change away from being able to do that in the beta has just been amazing and, and for me personally it's just so so exciting to be here now and have the chance to talk a little bit more about what we're planning to do well i can't wait to chat about not only the announcements uh, made during the developer update but also you know pick your brains about some first impressions regarding the overwatch 2 alpha which is up and running as we speak but let's take a few steps back uh, to find out how we actually got here uh, in terms of release slash schedule i guess uh, with overwatch 2 when and why did you guys decide to more or less split the game in two? So that's a really good question. Um, and it, it is something we have talked about a lot, especially um, recently and over the last year. And I think to to like really put it in perspective, it's it's important to talk about two values that are core to development for Overwatch. Uh, and, and the first is, um, to always be delivering regular content to the game and updating it and keeping it feeling fresh and exciting. Um, and, and the second value, and I think that this is a value, um, it's not just an Overwatch value, it's a value that all of Blizzard shares, and it's um, it's to release a game when we feel like it's ready um, and when we feel like it's great. And so you, like, you take those two values, and then um, in light of the team kind of um, choosing this strategy to focus on Overwatch 2 um, and to, to, to put a lot of resources into the campaign and, and the hero mode for that side of the game, um, it, it left the live service with less focus. Um, and, and by doing that, you know, it, it put us in like this, this really difficult position. So, um, we could either be, and it, it put us in a difficult position because like those two sides of the game were now like tied together. So like Overwatch Live support was now tied to um, development on on Overwatch Two systems and features, um, and and that's a it's a it's a difficult spot to be in because suddenly you have like these two core values um, that aren't aligning with each other anymore. Is it like hey let's Let's just get Overwatch 2 out as fast as we possibly can um, so that we can start supporting the live game some more. Um, but before we actually think it's ready, you know, that it goes against everything that 
I think Blizzard stands for, you know? Um, or is it, hey, let's let's keep working on Overwatch 2 and release everything when we think it's great um, and, and have this gap stretch on longer and longer, and we couldn't do that. So um, in essence, us kind of like splitting both sides of the game from each other is a way for us to start ad addressing this problem. You know, like, um, I... I love this company. There's like so many talented people here. I've I've been working here almost 20 years, and like, and one of the reasons that I'm here is because I feel like when Blizzard releases a game, it's it's going to be great. It's going to be amazing, um, and that it's also going to have a high level of support to it. Um, and so I think pulling these two parts of the game away from each other is our way of addressing all of that, keeping those core values um, at the same time um, and still being able to deliver an amazing experience for, for Overwatch 2. Yeah, and I think the feedback to that strategic move has been overarchingly very, very positive. I know we're all so, so excited to see uh, everything which has been shared which, uh, from you guys last week, but uh, there has been a big communication drought in Overwatch in the past. Uh, so how will your team ensure that things will be different now? Like how frequent should or can we uh, actually expect some meaningful uh, communication updates heading our way? Yeah, it's it's not an excuse, but it's sort of more of an explanation. I think part of the reason why um, we didn't do as good of a job over the last several months in communicating as we wanted to was as we were sort of making this shift in strategy that Aaron just talked about it, it's sort of challenging to talk about that until you figured out um, exactly how we were going to land that plan, our ability to deliver against it, and, and all of those things. And so um, I, I think the whole team understands that collectively we needed to do a better job. And, and going forward, we need to do a better job of communicating with our players. Um, we made that renewed promise in, in the update that Aaron shared last week. And... I think there's still some skepticism, right? Of well, they've they've said this before. Do do you actually mean it this time? Um, our hope is that we're we're here a week later, coming back and talking to players again, sharing more information, talking about how the alpha is going, um, all of that stuff. Really, in that spirit of we made that promise, we intend to keep it, and and even going forward as we look toward um, toward our first beta test, our, our goal really is even between now and then to be coming out regularly with more information about what players can expect there and, and continuing to respond to questions where we can. So we, we know that we need to prove it. Um, I think this is hopefully a, a good first step in that direction, but we have work to do there. Yeah, definitely a trust building exercise, but on the right track right here. I'm so glad that uh, all three of you are joining me for a chat today. Now, we did also hear a commitment to delivering more content, but uh, that, you know, that, that leaves some people a little bit worried, a little bit scared with the question, has the team grown to a point uh, where it is suddenly able to actually, you know, support that increase in content? Yeah, it's a, that's an interesting thing to, to talk about. Um, the, the original Overwatch team, when the, the game shipped, it was like between sixty or seventy people, um, and it was it was really small. Um, and we did quickly start growing as we started adding more features to the game. Um, but we're talking about a much bigger experience now, um, and we're talking about adding a lot more content to the game than than we have in the past, especially the past few years. And to do it, just it just takes more people, you know? And so we have been growing, we have been been expanding. We're over 200 people now. Um, and we're going to continue to grow on top of that. And um, we're working on, on a new big thing, right? And it's, we talk about Overwatch 2 a lot, but like, I, I kind of feel like we have the Overwatch team 2.0 as, as well. It's this, collection of like amazingly talented individuals that all had a love for Blizzard and a love for Overwatch um, and a desire to come and, and help create more things for this game. And we are so lucky to have all of them. And at the same time, um, we've, we've still have like this amazing core of people, you know, that helped ship the first game. Like all, all of the directors on our team or, or most of them we're all there for the inception of the original game. We have like 
multiple designers on this team that have all been at Blizzard for over 20 years and bring, including Jeff Goodman, and <laughs> and um, bring like this incredible amount of um, sort of like experience and knowledge of the game um, with them. And um, and so, yeah, so so the team is growing and it's important for us and important for us to keep growing. And it's all because we want to be able to support the game um, as much as we possibly can. Yeah, there's certainly no lack of talent on this team or any team at Blizzard, really. And uh, I can see our chat is also complimenting our ability to stare into the camera. We're very good at that. What can you say? Like the, the, the dead oh, pants like uh, it's, it's perfection at this point, it really is. Now, uh, Aaron, I heard you saying life service earlier. This is something we hear you guys mention uh, quite a bit in the past as well. But what does life service actually mean to the Overwatch team and to Overwatch itself? Yeah, so life service, I, I get that it's just, it's sort of like an industry label or an industry term. And um, the way that that we kind of talk about it internally is more of Overwatch being a, a living game. Um, and I think there's a bunch of components to that. So um, we want the game to feel like it has like a regular heartbeat to it. Um, and some of that just comes with with regular updates to the game. And we want people to be able to like expect more content coming. And even a lot of times expect the, the type of content that's going to be coming to the game. And um, when we do that and we do it right, I feel like it is um, always keeping the game fresh and it's also like changing the game. So um, especially like different types of things that we release, you know, from like new maps to new game modes and especially new heroes, things like that actually change the way that the game is played on, on a fundamental level sometimes. Um, and I think that that's, that's really exciting for players. And um, to this isn't quite answering the question, but to even talk about the past a little bit, like when we, when we um, kind of like pulled some of our, um, pulled focus away from Overwatch 1 as we were developing Overwatch 2, um, we stopped releasing heroes to the game. Um, and there was this consensus that Overwatch was maybe in one of the best balance places that it had ever been in, but people still wanted there to be changes to the game. And when we make like balance changes to the game or any type of change, we always want that to be something that's elevating the game and making it better. And we're in like this really awkward position of like, well, the game's in like a really great spot, but people want changes to it. Um, and when you think about um, further back in the past, when we were releasing more heroes to the game, that wasn't really the problem. The, the, there, the meta was always changing. There was always like different strategies that were happening because there was just enough being added to the game um, that um, it felt like this living experience and this thing that, that um, people would react to. Um, and th there's other types of content in there too. Like if you think about some of the features that we've released um, since launch of the game, like right after we launched, we released the competitive system. Um, we released the arcade and crossplay. All of those things kind of change the way people think about and play the game. And so part of like a living game and a living experience is to continually be releasing content and features like that. And then um, like the last part about that is we always want the game to um, have a connection to the real world and to kind of reflect what's happening in, in the real world. We love that our game is set actually um, on, on Earth and that people are able to um, to relate to a lot of the different heroes and locations that we have there. But we also like to update it with things like a Halloween event or a Lunar, a Lunar New Year event, things that actually represent um, parts of our everyday experiences. And so like continuing to add um, pieces of content like that and updating those is all part of um, a living game or like our interpretation of what a live service game is. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, as happy as I am to play Junkenstein Revenge uh, for the next 10 years of my life, I do <laughs> also appreciate new content coming our way. Now, I want to shift gears. I want to talk about the alpha as well as the upcoming beta. Uh, we know the alpha is up and running, the beta just on the horizon. Uh, what are your main goals for the alpha as well as the beta? Uh, what kind of performance benchmarks, I guess, uh, did your team set yourself for either of those two? 
<laughs> well, for me and my team, you know, we're very focused on hero hero balance. I like that Aaron just said the game was perfectly balanced a little bit ago. That's <laughs> sure that went over really well. Uh, the alpha's uh, not quite that way yet, I will say. Um, you know, we made a ton of changes. So um, certainly uh, 5v5 and a bunch of reworks and stuff has just caused like mass chaos. Um, and especially because, you know, we're in a place where we've played the game ourselves for a long time now. And, you know, we have our own sort of internal meta, uh, which is always very different than the external meta, especially when the game has not been out. Um, so it's sort of like uh, pretty quickly got a lot of feedback about a lot of stuff that was pretty overpowered. So, you know, we um, have been reacting really quickly and trying to get uh, some changes out there, but uh, it's been super exciting. I think that there's... Um, there's a lot of interesting things that are happening now that other people are playing it and, and Jeff was alluding to it, but there's also like a lot of different skill levels that are in the alpha too. So, um, we don't have, obviously we don't have overwatch league players on the development team. And so, um, to be able to see the way that they play the game, um, is fascinating. The it's almost like we get two sets of feedback sometimes or, or a spectrum of feedback for our game because it plays pretty differently between um, like mid skills to high skills and then like that upper echelon of, of skill that's there, you know? Like you think about um, the like the aim, um, like in the precision that, that some of these people play with, it, it really affects um, some of the some of the like decisions and, and the way that we think about we think about the game and so like it's great to get all of the feedback but it's also nice to get like a new perspective from people as well and it's something that we're not really able to get on the team and now we're able to get as we're as we're watching like a whole new set of players jump into the game and it's really helping us fine tune some of the um, some of the balance pieces that we're looking at. Yeah, I mean, with, with actually all due respect to my colleagues on the dev team, like playing against Jake on the alpha is a different <laughs> is a different experience. Um, that, that that happened to be like three matches in a row the other night. Uh, <laughs> thanks, thanks, Jake. Um, and it's it's like there, there's some of that that's really helpful. I think particularly for the folks on the design side of things. There's also a bunch of like less kind of cool goals for the alpha and, and the upcoming beta of like stability and testing servers and matchmaking systems. And th there's a whole bunch of things where changing systems under the hood like we have and moving to 5v5 and, and what impact does that have on our queue times and how we do matchmaking and all of those types of things where it's sort of a little bit less like in your face as a player than hey, there's a new hero, or we've reworked some of the other heroes or changed balance, but it's it's also really important for our team. Yeah, I guess the more data points you can collect from every angle, the better uh, the end result will be. Uh, now, of course, also the more feedback you get, the more comprehensive uh, your feedback is. So I do wonder, how are people actually chosen for the alpha and beta? How do you choose who who should come in to give you feedback and who shouldn't? Yeah, so for for the alpha, um, it's the vast majority of players, and there are, are actually our fellow Blizzard employees, um, and and then we have this group of Overwatch League pros, um, basically some some of like our family members, like my my little brothers in the alpha, um, and I you know I think for a lot of the members of the dev team, um, being able to invite in even just one or two of their friends is, is really cool. Um, and then there's a, a small handful of others, but it really is this um, this pretty tight group. And again, the spirit of the alpha is to go from just a couple hundred of us testing up to several thousand people when you include Blizzard employees in there and, and really to be able to then um, get enough feedback over this period where by the time that we launch the beta, we've had the opportunity to take a couple of passes at addressing bugs and other types of things like that, some balance changes that we can talk more about, um, that that type of stuff. For the beta, um, honestly, we've been blown away by just the enthusiasm for it. Um, I, I think I speak on behalf of all of the poor people on our server and, and website team. <laughs> um, but, uh, like they, they, were, they were prepared too, and it still crashed the server. Um, 
So we, we've just been, honestly, all of us, I think, humbled and, and genuinely um, feeling really grateful seeing the, the positive response to that. Um, I think later today or in, in a little bit, we're actually going to be able to update the beta signup site with an FAQ for players that talks a little bit more about how we plan to select players in the beta, um, what that process will look like. But our, our goal, I think, broadly for the first beta is to bring in players in a broad range of skill levels, um, a broad range of regions, different system configurations, like some people with the new graphics card and some people without, and, and those types of things. Just again, in that spirit of having um, a broad and representative test as we continue to roll out this content um, and get a chance for uh, for players to get their hands on it and for our team to get all of that feedback. Yeah, no surprises at all that the website crashed. So you're trying to be prepared, but uh, just can't be. Just never be prepared for that. <laughs> uh, now you said broad spectrum. I saw some people in chat asking already and obviously all over the internet, console players. Will they be able to get their hands on the beta as well? Will they have a chance to try it out before it goes live? So for this first beta, for um, we are keeping it to PC only. But while I can't really get into the details of it now, like we do want to include console players at a future point in our beta testing program, and, and we're working toward doing that. All right. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> there you have it, console players. You're welcome. Uh, we know that our players, uh, our pro players, uh, are currently wilding out in the alpha. Can you speak to what the reception and feedback from them has been like so far? Like how extensive, helpful, or even eye-opening that kind of feedback from that pro level has been for you guys? <laughs> in some ways, it's been... Uh like surprising and in some ways it hasn't, I guess. Uh, I'm really happy at just the amount of feedback we're getting. I, you know, it's just been great. It's sort of, you know, we have these these channels open to communication. There's like a flood of uh, information. I'm kind of disseminating it to my team. We're deciding what to do all the time, but um, it's it's been uh, really amazing seeing what they do with uh, the reworks and um, they pretty quickly called out things that were kind of overpowered that we were worried about. So that I guess that's <laughs> good and bad. Um, you know, obviously Sojourn's um, in there, and she's kind of based on this railgun. So, I mean, that's a hyper-accurate, high-damage weapon. Obviously, the, the pros are going to be pretty good with that. So, um, something we were worried about and, and pretty much immediately came to light. So, um, so you know, you know, originally when we were looking at this alpha, we weren't sure how many times we were going to be able to update it. You know, we thought maybe we, you know, we would just be able to, you know, put it out there and gather a lot of feedback and then maybe move on to beta. But... Pretty quickly, we were just like, okay, we need to patch. We need to, we need to make updates to this. We need to respond. We need to iterate. Um, so we've actually been able to do that. I think we just uh, had our first big balance patch today, actually. So um, we're able to sort of gather that feedback and iterate. It's been amazing, and it's really helpful for um, sort of to get that new, fresh eyes on everything, especially the pros, uh, and, and seeing what you know what comes out of it. Yeah, and there's like, there's been some like really interesting um, pieces of feedback too, and like from the dev team and even from a lot of the people that that are playing in the alpha right now um there's so much positive feedback um a, a lot of it even around 5v5 where it feels like there's the pace of the game it's not crazy fast but it's sped up a little bit there's they're getting um you know stuck at chokes especially behind something like a double barrier less than they were before it feels like there's more space to to move around the map um and then um, a lot of times, like, you'll look at some of the Overwatch League players, um, and it is, there's some of that's happening, but it's, it's at, like, a different level. So um, when, there's, when there's only one tank um, and when there's a lot less CC out uh, on the mm -hmm. battlefield, because that's some of the changes that, that we've made here also, um, sometimes, like, a tracer can get into the back line and just wreak havoc because it, it doesn't feel like there's as much that supports can do. There's not like an off tank that's peeling. There's not uh, other like members of the team that can like um, sort of like counter some of the abilities that that these people have. So like you'll see some of the like some of the heroes that we have, especially some of the flanking heroes like Tracer and Reaper are now like really dangerous back there. And we started getting support that's like, hey, just it feels like, um, or we started getting feedback that it feels like our support heroes are are unsupported, you know, and that, um, that it's just that they need some work there. Um, and it, we think that that's, that feedback's right. And so, so we're looking into it and we're hoping mm -hmm. to like preserve all of the things that, 
that we think make 5e5 great, but also be able to kind of like kind of cater it to this high skill audience um, and kind of merge all of that together. So how do you look into that kind of stuff? Like what does the process for feedback when it comes to balance changes or concerns, uh, especially, how does that process look like? I mean, we're get, like usual, we get a lot of feedback from a lot of different sources, but we do have like a main channel uh, of feedback we get kind of from everybody, um, which is kind of nice that it's centralized. But um, it, a lot of it's looking at different people's perspectives and how they're playing it and trying to get context. I mean, we're in direct communication with people. It's not just like a one-way street where they're just sending us stuff. A lot, a lot of times we're asking questions about uh, how they're playing it or what maps they're playing on and stuff like that to sort of get you know, better context. But um, you know, a lot of the stuff that Aaron mentioned is sort of been consistent feedback, for example, that supports feel like they're just really hard to be, you know, survive, basically. They're just getting dove on. Uh, the meta is really, really fast, uh, for better or for worse. We knew it would be faster, uh, that's for sure, but it's definitely uh, kind of this, like, super dive right now, almost. Um, so, I mean, that's something we're, you know, we have this opportunity now to make these changes and iterate on the game and make sure we're, it's in a place where... You know, everyone's gonna be happy with it. Right on. Well, I, I do wonder how frequent the the bug fixes are currently uh, in the alpha, mm -hmm. uh, or I guess what I'm asking, what does the turnaround time from feedback slash complaint to the fix look like at sure. the moment? I mean, it it sort of depends. We um, actually had a technically, like I said, we had the first patch today, but actually that's not even really true. We had a a really small patch, I think, on Monday. Um, so we've been able to patch at least in this case twice in one week, which is pretty nice. Um, but yeah, so I mean, a lot of it depends on not necessarily sort of the, the tech side and how often we could patch and sort of QA things. Um, a lot of it's sort of um, getting the feedback and discussing it and talking about what we want to do and how crazy do we want to try things. You know, sometimes <laughs> it's, um, you know, we're trying, uh, you know, we have a patch or two to try really, really crazy things. And if we, you know, if we, if we tiptoe and try to make small changes, maybe we won't get anywhere useful. But if we make like, you know, a big change that you think is maybe even too strong. Um, it, you, that's more sort of powerful feedback that you can combine with other feedback and, you know, you can get a lot more, um, get at the, the changes you really need, even if you think that change isn't going to be maybe what you want. So we did some pretty wild stuff today. <laughs> we'll see how it plays. Uh, but that's kind of how we've been sort of trying to get at it and how, you know, in my opinion, I just want to make changes as much as possible because iteration is really where we really get at, like, the, the real good balance and the, where the fun really is. Yeah, we we also have this um, like I, I, there's the balance changes, and then again there's like quality of life making. It. One of the goals of the alpha, right, is that by the time we get to the beta, we've addressed some of the bugs that people are talking about that have impacted their experience. And our QA team has been doing an amazing job mm -hmm. of like logging literally everything. And then it's it's sort of a like how important is this thing to fix tomorrow? And and some of the bugs are just like downright funny. I, I actually sort of wish we hadn't. Um, <laughs> fixed fixed some of them someone reported uh like winston was too wide to fit through a door on our, our new map circuit royale that, that got fixed so i think by the time that people get to see that map in beta in fact winston will fit through the door um <laughs> but it, it's there's like a whole bunch of that stuff that again when we had a couple hundred people testing this you don't you don't catch and we've multiple times already been able to to update the build and address things like that that are a little more quality of life it's definitely yeah, we are able Go ahead. Uh, I was just comment on that. It's definitely chaotic to try to get, you know, me and my team are trying to get these balance changes in and test. We usually try to run some internal tests too to make sure we're not doing something like really broken. Uh, <laughs> and then, of course, QA, you know, we're getting bug fixes from the tech side and everything. We're trying to like corral everything into one patch really quickly as, as fast as possible at the end. So it's it's pretty chaotic sometimes, but you know, I think we're getting there. Yeah, and it's the same thing with bugs. We're trying to hit all of the like the most egregious ones first. So we were able to jump on that Winston issue immediately but there's you know uh, or we had we had um we were missing all of sojourn's vo lines in the office yeah. we didn't know when she ulted you know she was just like this silent hero on the field <laughs> um and and people started saying like oh i think her her ult line it's like too quiet you know I, i'm not really <laughs> hearing it um and other people are like I, I don't think i hear it at all and we like we investigated it and this was maybe like an hour into the, the alpha <laughs> launching it's like oh whoops they're they're all missing and we're even getting feedback even down to like really small things like hey the the particle effects on this fountain 
aren't coming out of like the person's mouth. They're coming out of like their forehead, <laughs> and they'll include like screenshots and movies of it. So it's been like it's been really. I mean, my kind of nitpicky feedback. That's <laughs> good. You, bet. you should keep well, that. It's also always hard as, as a player, right, to figure out like, is this a feature or a bug? Like, is this yeah. like that way, or is this actually something I should be reporting? Now, uh, obviously, it's still early days in the alpha, but uh, have there been any surprising revelations so far regarding the new content which is feature, uh, featured in the alpha? Looking at uh, the new game mode push, for example, or some of the hero reworks, the new maps, mm. uh, or maybe just to switch to five v five. Um, there's definitely been a lot of surprises for the, on the hero side. Um, I mean, there's some stuff that, um, I mean, this is like the opposite of answering question, sort of, but it's in some ways where I was really happy to see some confirmation too, because, you know, we had been playing internally for a long time. And like I said, our, our internal meta is obviously very different, uh, a lot of times. And so we were not obviously are always super confident in it, but, uh, you know, we heard a lot of, um, concerns when we talked about 5v5 originally that, you know, only main tanks were going to really be viable, probably like Reinhardt's, like, how do you not play Reinhardt in that situation, for example, or something. Uh, and internally, we were like, man, it really kind of feels like the opposite. <laughs> like, we're a little worried for Reinhardt, and we're a little, like, feeling like D.Va and Zarya and, uh, are, you know, are really strong. And so we just sort of like, well, let's, I guess we'll see what happens when we put this, you know, put this in other people's hands. And that, you know, that's one example of where it turns out that pretty much they agree that Reinhardt's uh, maybe a little weak and, and sort of the off tanks are actually kind of running the show right now. Um, so that, I mean, Especially it's Doomfist. Really concern. <laughs> yeah, all right. You should so talk Doomfist. about Doomfist a little bit. Yeah. He, he is strong. So Doomfist, uh, probably one of the bigger reworks certainly is switch roles so that he's a tank now. So that's, um, it's really been super interesting getting feedback on that because we haven't done that very often. Uh, technically not the first time it's Symmetra used to be support, uh, originally, um, way back in the day. <laughs> um, but so yeah, yeah Doomfist has, you know, yeah, been, been generally extremely positive hearing that getting the feedback from him that you know i was really scared to see what kind of feedback we're going to get because it's so different um he's a little strong right now so i don't know how much of the super positive feedback is coming from how strong he is but um i'm you know i, I was really worried about him in particular because there are certain heroes in our game that have a really strong sort of feel to them that if you play a lot you sort of get attached to and it's really hard to distance yourself from that you know especially heroes like tracer and genji and doofus like the high mobile um, heroes like that. So Doofus is definitely one of those. You have the, the dedicated fan base, but um, from what we've gotten feedback on so far from the dedicated Doofus players that we have, they're generally really excited for it, and they, they're they really happy even with the role change. So um, I've been really happy about that. Um, we have to nerf him a little bit, but you know, like everything else. Oh, but yeah, I want to find out how these changes happen. Like someday a diff shows up and he often is like, how about he's a tank now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, to speak to that actually is to kind of why we went that way. I think it's interesting. You know, part of one of the major sort of working changes we were trying to get at for the combat of the game is to just reduce crowd control effects a lot. So a lot, a lot less stuns, hard, especially hard crowd control effects. So, um, and you know, we're we're looking at May and we changed how May's freeze work. It only works on our ult now and stuff like that. And those are kind of like low hanging fruit things that we can change. And then it comes to a hero like Doomfist. You're like, well. What do we do? This guy is sort of built on crowd control. And he's so we either needed to basically go in there and change uh probably a lot of his kit or like really reduce crowd control on how he functioned, which is hard to sort of a combo based hero, or move into a tank role and you know the tanks are where we're kind of allowing the crowd control and the hard crowd control to exist. So we could sort of maintain a lot of this feel and his kit in that role. Um and so that's kind of what we ended up going with and, and it worked out really well. So but uh, yeah, as Aaron mentioned earlier, it has led to some scary issues with um, heroes that we knew were going to be uh, maybe problematic because they're kept in check by crack control, like Tracer, Genji, Reaper. Um, so we had some plans to, we had some things in place to sort of reduce their power, but it clearly wasn't enough. <laughs> so we're still working on that. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's I, been like really interesting to watch a lot of that too. And like Doomfist in, in particular, you know, like we, he kind of illustrates the way we've been trying to handle the CC abilities in game. Um, is is by moving them as many of them into the tank role as we can, um, and part of that is because um, it it kind of because there's only one tank on the battlefield now it reduces how many are out there, um, and also like um, for tank players we would get feedback that sometimes it just felt like you were in a pinball machine you know as you're on the front line and you're you're getting hit by the the, the crowd control abilities of like 
all six heroes, you know, yeah. um, on the enemy team. And so it just kind of helps for us to center them there. And so like, it made a lot of sense to move Doomfist that way. Um, but at the same time, like, he was like such a fast hero um, that, um, and it, he could he could be all over the place sometimes. And so like, we did a little bit to slow him down. He's still, he's still very mobile, you know, like, um, but th th there's been a change to his kit and we'll, we'll go into like more details of like the change to his kit, um, and to, and to Riss's kit later. But like at this point, like he basically has a leap that's similar to a Winston's leap yep. to get in, you know? And so like his ability to initiate some of these fights, um, is actually pretty amazing. Um, and also like the cause of some of the, some of the issues that he has, you know, like <laughs> a, imagine a, a doom fist that's able to get in is more survivable than it used to be and also has like the ultimate escape to kind of pop out of combat so we're kind it of does do a lot less that. damage though <laughs> that's well, yeah that's way. that's a good point. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so okay yeah so don't imagine that <laughs> <laughs> you're scaring people you know. But, yeah, I mean, exactly. honestly, like, it, it's also always depends on who, who is playing that Doomfist. If I'm playing the Doomfist on your server, you have nothing to be worried about. <laughs> I mean, leave them in there, and then I'm just kind of well and now. <laughs> I mean, that is, yeah. That's... There's that. Uh, now, uh, I want to talk about, uh, about another uh, brand new feature, uh, which has mm -hmm. not been getting quite as much spotlight so far, uh, uh, which is the ping system. I personally love it. But I would love to hear your thoughts uh, on the process, why you felt this is necessary to be added. Like, what were you hoping to improve or fix with the ping system? Yeah, so the, the ping system has actually been great. And I, I agree with you. There's there's moments there where it, it feels like it changes the way you play the game or, or think about the game. Um, and there's a lot of reasons to do a system like this. You know, not, not everybody wants to communicate using voice comm. Um, and our game's obviously too fast to be able to strategize over like in-game chat. Like that's obviously not going to work. And then a ping system also, um, a lot of times it can be more precise even than, than voice can be because it, it, um, will use real world locations or in-game, um, real world locations. Um, and also like in-game context too. And so like, um, to, to talk about that a little more, like, the ping system that we're doing, it's its very context sensitive. So depending on um, what you're pinging, um, who your hero is, um, who like what what the other enemy team is can change a lot of a lot of those pings. So like um, some of like the really cool things in it are um, like um, enemy players behind walls can't be pinged. You can't see them. But if they're revealed by Hanzo or Widowmaker, suddenly you can start pinging those targets. Um, or um, some 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 heroes can actually remove pings from themselves. So um, like when Moira fades, removes ping on her. She just used an escape on it. Um, you can ping non-heroes in the game, like Bob. Um, and and also it's like totally customizable. So um, not only is it context sensitive, but then um, we we have something kind of similar to the comms wheel, where you can select the different. Um, the different pings that that are more important to you. So you don't always have to use the context sensitive ping. You can use all sorts of other different ones. And um, and so that's that's kind of like a lot of some of the reasoning behind it, some of the features that are in there. But we've also gotten like a lot of like really great feedback on the ping system. Even just simple things like, hey, it needs to be more responsive. The 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 ping wheel needs to be more responsive. Just like um, clicking the world needs to be more responsive. So so we're working on that. We also realize it's not quite noticeable enough. Um, and it, what we have in there is kind of our first pass on it, but we're gonna start um, kind of like getting um, more there on like the visuals and the sound side of it. We're looking at more context aware features. There's like a really great um, suggestion from one of our content creators um, um, uh, to, to like for a support character, for them to, um, to actually have unique VO lines depending upon which support character is pinging. Um, so like right now, if you're support and you ping, it'll say something like, come to me for healing. But wouldn't it be great if it was Anna and she said something like, get in line of sight so I can heal you. Or if it was Lucio saying like, like um, group up on me for healing and things like that. And so we're looking into a lot of feedback like that. 
Um, we're also fixing bugs. Like right now, you can use the ping system when you're dead, and you probably ought not to be able to do that. Um, so yeah, so it's it's been like a really, really like great addition to the game. We've gotten great feedback on it. And I'm super excited for it. I'll just so add to like I, I yeah. think on the ping system, the conversation we just had about Doomfist, like a lot of these things obviously are a lot easier to show players versus us sitting here talking to all of you. I think just to address that sort of head on, we're a week into our alpha this morning, we significantly updated the balance for Orissa and for Doomfist and for a lot of these things. And so what we plan to do is as we get a little bit closer to our April beta, we do plan to come back and say, hey, here's all of Doomfist's new kit. These are his new abilities. This is how much damage these things do. The, the leap does these types of things. And we will show that. Um, the same is true on something like a ping system where just more descriptive, more descriptive uh, and more just visual, what does this look like? like we know that people most want to see that. It's a little bit of a, we're making significant changes through the alpha on these things. And we want to make sure that when we come out and we talk about the Arista rework, it's um, explaining she has a javelin now as an aside, right? Like we just changed a lot of how that worked this morning in response to feedback. We want to make sure that we have probably one more crack at updating some of these really significant things before we come out with the, uh, here's how all of that works and looks. Exactly. So you got to practice some patience. See, chat ain't usually that good about it. I know you all are just dying to see content and, and features and like all the great things coming our way, but you have to wait a little longer for that. Now, the more we chat, of course, the more excited I get about watching, you know, the first few official owl matches and playing all that new content with my friends. Uh, now, while I do love an era of mystery uh, and I still laugh about a good old Soon TM meme, is there actually a specific date set for when the beta will officially hit the general public who have signed up for it? April 26th. That's that's our plan. Uh, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> that's more direct than that. <laughs> Can't believe you answered that question, actually. <laughs> no one's ever asked this before. Other people just have to ask. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, April 26th, then mark your calendars and on uh, this exciting announcement. I think we should be ready to wrap things up here. Aaron, I would like to hand it over to you for some last words to our community. Yeah, sure. It's This has been like a really exciting time. And I think um, what um, the team is like really looking forward to um, isn't just the alpha, but like the rest of what's coming, you know, like this is gonna be such an exciting time um, for our community, for our players, for the team. We're so excited for it. We can't wait to bring you along for the journey. We can't wait to get in front of you more, talk about the game more, um, talk about some of the things that are coming and our, and our insights and some of the feedback and changes that we're doing. So um, thank you so much for watching um, and, and have a great day. We can't wait to, to see you and play with you in the future.